Chapter 14 I stopped and had breakfast at Gus O'Malley's, a little Irish joint on the park. Gus is a sucker for any puss with a hustler's smile and a sorry tail, and there's always a mixture of sharp-eyed locals and lucked-out grifters around on his floor. You want the street talk? You go to Gus's. You gather an earful. The food isn't bad. I worked my way in through the narrow alley and into a kitchen with clinging pots and the heady aroma of Irish bacon. Gus looked me over. Hey, Sammy, he yelled. Long time no see ya. Come on, have a seat. I went up to a spot near the sink in the corner. 12.45 and the corner was jammed. Heavyweight mousers exchanging whoppers, little old ladies with pavement sore paws, and the girls from the alley as skinny as dimes with their fraying collars and ratty coats and those wrenchingly desperate kittenish smiles. I dodged their eyeballs and landed a spot next to Butch and Jane, who I know from the street. So, how's it been going? I opened. Nah, it's been going nasty. I'm looking for work. Butch cocked his head at me, licking some wonderfully syrupy pancake crumbs from his nose. Like I'd got me this gig down at Cameraman's Market. Night Mouser. Sensational job. Fabulous setup. Perfect hours, great location, all I can eat. So what happens? They pass a law. No more cats allowed in a market. Last Friday, I'm out of work. He's becoming Republican, Jane butted in. He wants the government off his back. And the special interests, Butch said to Jane. I think I got clobbered by special interests. What special interests? She argued. Butch looked up at her crossly and snarled, The mice! I didn't butt into it. Only a fool has political arguments. Nobody wins, and it ruins your friendship as well as your meal. And this was a meal that I didn't want ruined. Gus had come up with a sizzling platter of crumbled bacon and scrambled eggs. The eggs scrambled softly and made with milk. The warm aroma was like a poem, a sensual sonnet, a radiant rhyme. An excellent breakfast, I've always figured, is fuel for the body, but food for the soul. I was licking my whiskers when Slasher came in. He did not come softly. He didn't have to. He walked like a man who's got several inches and ten pounds up on the rest of the world, and the world better like it or lick a few lumps. I looked up at Butch and said, Kid, give me cover. I want to get out of here quiet and fast. Butch nodded quickly and covered my flanks as I raced to the exit. So what's guy you ticked? He said out in the alley. The Red Himalayan. You scared of him, Sammy? Nope. Not at all. I just want to tail him as soon as he leaves, and I don't want him on to me. Want any help? I said, No, I don't think so, but thanks for the thought. Then I'll finish my breakfast, he said, backing off. And I'll give him the eye he don't go on the lamb. I hid in a carton. Me and the corpse of an outcast geranium still in its pot, and an empty can of Del Monte peaches. I waited patiently, low to the ground in that hunter's position, and stared at the door. Nothing happened. Twenty-five minutes of nothing happened, and then something did. He came wandering mindlessly out of O'Malley's, mellowed by breakfast and licking his paws. He didn't appear to expect to be followed. He took no precautions. He didn't look back. He started moving. I waited some more and then followed him silently ten feet behind. At the corner of Bleecker, he stopped for a light, and I stopped at a kiosk, pretending to browse the afternoon papers. Then I got snagged. Missing kitten valued at millions. Reward posted at 50k. I couldn't help it. I started to read. Wiggum, New York, December 12th. The story broke around 10 last night. 
the golden kitten. I lifted my eyes and then raced to the corner. The slasher was gone. There was movement everywhere, color and light. The street was alive with the hustle of shoppers. Tires hissed through the blackening slush, and a guy selling Christmas trees guarded his forest from three Pomeranians ready to spritz, but the red Himalayan was nowhere in sight. I peered past the legs of the booted tourists, the soggy sneakers, the muddy cuffs, the spattered-on bags from Banana Republic, and then I saw him, across Bleecker sauntering jauntily into a shop with a faded awning. The healthier pet. It all came together with one of those crashes that knocked all the crockery out of my head. Healthier pet! The revolting cat food that lured little Fluffer from Patter's embrace. Or that lured little Louie from Hench's embrace. The number of changes in everyone's name was beginning to frazzle me, that part aside, I was feeling terrific. Little Jack Horner who'd stood on the corner and pulled out the plum. I crossed at my leisure, taking my time about checking the windows in front of the store. Past the bags full of seaweed-enriched rice cakes, organic litter, and kitty cat help, I could see the interior, aisle after aisle of the tasteless and hideous totems of health. I could see no humans and no other cats, not even the slasher. I looked at the street. Then I looked at the cat door he must have gone in by. I took my chances and crashed through the slot. <laughs>